Plants are flexible organisms. They have the potential to adjust their shape depending on the conditions to which they are exposed. This has helped plants to colonize almost every corner of the globe. But just like humans, a lot of plants, or crops, cannot survive on salt water. Rising sea levels and irrigation cause an increase in salinization of soils. This makes high salinity one of the major abiotic factors threatening food security worldwide. Here at the University of Amsterdam, our research focuses on how plants perceive and adjust to high salinity. And recently, Magdalena Djokowska and I summarized the state of the art in this field. In order to make plants more salt tolerant, it is extremely important to investigate what happens to them after they've been exposed to salt stress on various timescales and in various organs. Exposure to salt stress activates many signaling pathways, which intolerant plant lead to acclimation. And in our review, we integrated the state of knowledge on those very, very early signaling responses taking place seconds to minutes with the growth of different organs occurring hours to days. Plants exposed to salt stress cease to grow immediately. At this stage, salt enters the cells through non-specific ion channels in the membrane, which then triggers a series of events within the cells that leads to production of stress hormones and a reduction in cell division and cell growth. At later stages, the growth recovers a bit as the salt ions are pumped into vacuoles and storage tissues, but it hardly ever reaches control levels. Interestingly, growth of individual plant organs is affected to different degrees by salt stress. So if we would compare salt stress plants to normal grown plants, they show a different architecture. These recent studies suggest that relative changes in growth morphology are indeed important contributors to salt tolerance. And as such, we think that they really provide new leads for breeding salt tolerant crops. On the other hand, actually, we still don't know what are the mechanisms behind salt perception and how growth recovery and changes in plant architecture actually contribute to salt tolerance. And our goal is to address these issues in the coming years. <laughs>